Hello everyone and welcome to another J. Robinson Art Peel Off Painting Workshop. Today we're going to have a lot of fun and I always like to start every video with the same few words. This is going to be so easy and so much fun so just relax. Today what we're going to be painting is couple on the bench and as I always say with a peel off painting you can start and paint this project or you can embellish and add to this whatever you'd like. So today this is basically what we're going to be painting and I don't want you to get stressed out over anything that you see because I'm going to take you through this step by step. First I'd like to introduce the products and the elements that we have around us. We have a plastic apron. We have a paper towel, which I like to keep folded. You might want to grab a couple extra paper towels. I also have off camera a cup of water. I've provided you with two brushes. We're going to call this one the pointed brush and this one the flat brush. And I've also given you a spatula, which is going to be used to take the peel off off the canvas panel. We've also given you some colors and a paper palette. The glossy side is the side you want to use to put the paint on. Now I'm going to show you, and I'm not saying that you're, you're not capable, but we've had a few people had some difficulties with this. I'm going to show you how to open every single thing. So here's your complete packet. If you turn it over to this side and just open up two sides here, see? and just pop it open and just dump your paints out. You can dump them on the table or dump them in your hand. And then what you have inside for this particular product project is five packets, which pretty much open the same way. And I'm gonna show you individually how to open each one, how to pour it so that the whole process is seamless for you, nice and easy. Because the one thing I want you to do is take your time enjoy yourself and have some fun. So we're gonna start with the blue. Now there's a blue and there's a black. So I'm just gonna put those down. This color is orange. To some it looks red. So I'm gonna call it orange for purposes of the video. Here's white and here's yellow. So I'm gonna separate the black. Maybe I'll put the orange to the side for right now. And I'm going to start with the blue. Now again, here's the packet. There's a little plastic seal here. You just peel the two sides open. See? It looks flat, but if you hold it straight up, put one finger in and the other in, and just very lightly pop it open. Then what you want to do is take it and hold it sideways and just squeeze out a little color. That's all you need right there. Take the rest and put it off to the side. Now I'm gonna go with another packet. This one is white, same thing. You see how I'm holding it? I'm just gonna pop it open, grab the two sides, pop it open, squeeze it first lightly, and then I'm just gonna squeeze out a little bit of color right there. There's color number two. Let's go with the yellow. We take some yellow. We're going to pop it open, same way, squeeze out a tiny, tiny little bit of yellow. And the last color we're going to open is the orange. Same thing. See the packet? You got the plastic line. You use your finger to maneuver it to pull open the two sides. Once you get it, you just merely pop it open, squeeze it a little bit. And then squeeze just a little color out on the palette. Now, at J. Robinson Art, we like to give you a lot more color than you're actually going to use. So if you notice, I did not take the whole packet and squeeze it out. If I should need more color, I have it right behind me on a, another piece of paper just to keep it from getting messy. I also have this um, construction paper underneath my project so that as I'm painting, I don't mess up the table. So you may want to lay down some plastic, put some newspaper, whatever works for you. 
You may even want to take some two-sided tape and put it on the top and the bottom so when you lay it down, it doesn't move. The black, we will get to in the end. So let's get started. First thing we're going to do is pick up our flat brush. Now we're going to start right up here in the sky. We're going to throw in a little white cloud. I'll show you how to make a kind of a purple. Then we're going to add some yellow and orange, maybe some more white. Then we're going to do our little water scene and we'll work our way through. So we don't need this anymore. Let's get down to basics. What I've provided for you is an 8x10 canvas panel. On it, you'll have your peel off. I've also painted the canvas black, then painted it white. The black will come back later. The reason I gave you the white is so that when you put your colors on, you can paint on black, but I wanted to give you the best opportunity to have the brightest, most colorful, most vibrant colors. So I painted your canvas over with white, so this way you can have a little extra ease of making sure that your colors stick for you. Now up here in the sky, we're gonna be painting a light blue. So I'm gonna literally take some white and I'm just gonna fan that across the top of the canvas really quickly. This is not gonna stay, but this is where I'm gonna introduce some blue and it's gonna turn light blue automatically for me. Now there is no preference to how far down you can go or it's your call. You make the judgment, it's your sky. We're gonna just introduce how to do things you take it to the limits that you want. Now watch this. I'm only going to pick up a little dab will do you like VO5 back in the day. A little dab will do you. Take that. Look at that. Automatically take another little dab of VO5. See, if you start light and easy, you could always make it darker. But once you have something really, really dark, unless you can use white, it's hard to take it back the other way. So I'm going to just start with a very nice light sky light coloration see that see how i put the white first introduce the blue right on top of it and there because anything that stays is fine and it's gradated that's good too i don't want it to be one solid color like i'm painting a wall it's a variation in the sky okay so now that that's done i'm going to take and clean off my brush when i hit it side to side I call that ringing the bell. So I'm going to put my brush in the water, tap it, and then just run the brush like a bell. Wipe my brush. See how I'm wiping it on the paper towel. Now I'm going to pick up some of this white again. Now I'm going to put that more towards the bottom of the color I just laid in, but I am going to touch it towards the top. Heck, I could even spiral it like this to help give it some cloud shape, see? By just taking my brush and turning and churning, I give that impression that there's clouds there. That's fine. I just want some white introduced into the painting. Now, as promised, I'm going to show you how to take and make yourself a little bit of a purplish color. Just a little bit. See, this is good. See, looks like look like a cloud is just floating across the blue of the sky. That's all. So I'm going to take a tiny bit of blue and a tiny bit of orange. I'm going to kind of stir them together. Okay, see what I get here. Not really getting the purple that I want. I'm going to take some white. No, nope. we're going to bypass on the purple. Forgive me, we're just gonna leave the purple out. It's not necessary. We're gonna go with the yellow now. So we'll pick up some yellow and just put that into the white area. Now the one thing you don't wanna do at this point is touch the yellow with the blue. If you touch the yellow with the blue, it's gonna turn green. And while that can be an interesting sky, we don't want that in our painting today. But I do want to put some yellow in the sky, so I'm staying where the white is. Now, without cleaning the brush, I'm going to pick up some orange, and I'm going to introduce some of that into the painting. See how I'm just mixing it right into the bottom part of the yellow, and then letting some of the orange stand alone. And I'm just going to whisk that across, and when you get to the area where the peel-off is, just paint right on top of them. We're going to be painting on top of them anyway. We're not going to be painting around things. Again, the beauty of peel-off is so that you don't have to sit there and painstakingly 
go around elements. You just go right over the top. We will take it off later and do what we do. Okay, that's nice. That's looking great. Now what I'd like to do is reintroduce some more yellow right up in here. Just to give a little bit of a variation and maybe some more orange and yellow together. Just let them do their thing. And then, because I just want to do a little bit of a separation before I go back into the orange, let's go into some white. And then let's just go right on top and introduce that. That'll make a kind of a light orange, if you will. So a little bit more white here. And just keep panning that across. I'm just trying to give my sky some variation. And again, forgive me on the purple. I must have used actual purple in the beginning of that picture, but we don't need it. It's fine. I don't even want to keep talking about it because I don't want you to think you're missing anything because you're not. This is fine. There. Now, with this being done, you see I'm almost down to where the people are. And we're going to use this little hole to be our end point. We're going to take just some orange and we're just going to splash that right across this area here. Okay, we're just going to take some straight orange. Then I'm going to go over what we did really quickly so you can make sure you understand. And if you think I'm going too fast, you could always stop the video, pause the video, rewind the video. That's the beauty of technology. But I'm just moving along. And you should be too. It shouldn't be a thought thing. It should just be action. All right. So let's go over. We put some white. We added a smidgen, just a very little dab of blue to make a light blue. Then we added white, made it look like a cloud, threw in some yellow, put in some orange, then mixed a little white and orange together and made another little cloud shape and then came right back with some orange. Now we're going to clean off our brush, ring the bell. We're going to take some blue, just blue, just blue. And right about here, we're just going to take and draw us a line. We're just going to take the brush, let it, let the brush colors, let the colors turn whatever they're going to turn. And we're just going to make a line. And that line represents what they call the ocean's horizon line. That's the line when you're standing at the beach and you're looking out. It's the distance of the sea till your eyes can't see any further. And it looks straight. So we made it straight. Now we're just going to take some blue and the side of our brush, not the skinny of it. And we're just going to make all the rest of this blue all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. But if you notice, I'm going left and right, not up and down. If I were painting a waterfall, I would go up and down. But this is an ocean. And it lays down. So if the brush strokes are going to show up, you want them to show up left and right, not up and down. If you were having water pour over, like a river that has a bend and there's a little bit of a creek, and then it drops down a little bit, yes, you want to go up and down with that stroke. But the fact that we're laying in an ocean we want to just go left, right, left, right, left, right. And it doesn't matter if you go to the middle, to the end, but you want to just add that color all the way down to the bottom of the canvas. Left and right. It's a good exercise stroke too. So we'll call this the exercise portion of the video. <laughs> See, now we have our water laid in. We have our horizon line. We have our water laid in. We have our sky. Wow, we have really moved along. I'm going to take and clean off my brush. Ring the bell. Now, blue is a very dark color, so it may not come out 100%. But if we can get it to like 70 to 80, we're good. Just fix that. Okay. See? That's good. So let's go over what we have so far. We have our sky. We have our white semi-cloud we have a little yellow coloration we have our orange we have our white then we have our orange again we took straight blue and we made us a horizon line then we went left and right and created an ocean now if you notice 
there's still some wet paint on the canvas. There's still some separations here. So I'm going to take this brush and just very, very lightly stroke in some of the colors and just let it blend into itself. Just lifting off some of the color that's still seemingly wet. And while I'm doing that, I'm actually slowly blending in those colors in the back. Because again, this is distant stuff. The eyes play tricks when you're looking at something. You never really see where one color stops and the other color starts. So by softly just blending in some of that wet paint without making too big of a stroke, I'm very, very softly drying the canvas, helping it dry, and blending the canvas at the same time. Now, believe it or not, you just learned an artist trick. And should something like this occur for you, you just tap into a little bit of blue and change your horizon line. See, go right across like that, and then just add some more blue, and you've corrected what you think or thought was a problem. Now, on the peel, it doesn't matter because we're going to be peeling that off. Just want to make sure my horizon is semi-straight. Not perfect, but as straight as I can get it. There. See? Easy peasy. Now, what I would strongly suggest you do is at this point, talk to a friend. Hang out. You know, be friendly. Give the painting a chance to dry completely. We're using a water-soluble, water-based acrylic paint. Takes about three to five minutes to really set itself up. And the only reason I would do it if I were you is so that when you get to the part what I'm about to do, which is the peel, you don't have to worry about colors blending into itself. And before I actually remove this, I'm going to take some black and I'm going to put it out on the palette sheet. We're pretty much done with the rest of the colors. The black is now going to be our terra firma, our ground, if you will. And we're also going to take the little brush and make some weeds and grass things to it. And we're also going to add those birds in the sky. And all I'm doing is giving you an opportunity to see how if you're chatting with a friend, you're allowing it to dry, and then we'll come back and finish it. All right, now at this point, we're going to use our spatula. We're going to be taking the spatula. I'm literally going to be gripping it like this. Because I only want to use this little end right here. Or this end. Or this. You could even use that. But the key here is to use the spatula to help you lift up the peel off. Now, if your canvas has dried, you're not going to sustain any color movement which is why I asked you to give it three to five minutes in your time to allow the canvas to fully dry. You can see there's a lot of glistening on my canvas, so it's not dry. But I'm going to proceed on, and you're going to pretend that I did what you did, which is let it dry. Now, you see here you have the peel-off. You can put your finger on the peel-off. It's not going to mess with your painting. And you want to find any area to just stick the spatula underneath and start getting a lift. Once you get it under anywhere, wherever you decide to put it, that's where you want to take, grab whatever peeled up, and at a 90 degree angle, just start to pull. And when you peel away, la -da, you see what you have? You have a silhouetted set of characters right there waiting for you to either paint them, and in this case we're not, or paint around them, and in this case we are. So I'm going to take the flat brush, and right around here around their feet area, I'm just going to take the brush and literally make a line. Because that's going to be where the ground is. The line is telling me, don't paint above that line then i'm going to block in the rest of the bottom and this silhouetted character set of this very lovely couple sitting on the bench 
is now getting the groundwork for which they're sitting on. And don't worry, I'm going to show you what to do with that stuff if you have it. Some of you might, some of you might not. Some of you may want to leave it, some of you may not. But my job is to show you what to do in case you want to do it. So now, there's my ground. I have my couple, I have my ground. Color got in there, watch this. God, same color, that's why it's black. I'm just gonna clean off my brush, put this to the side, and we're gonna get to some of these other elements. Next brush I'm gonna pick up is this little pointy brush. I don't wanna take this brush and smash it down. So I'm just gonna stick it in the water, Wipe it on my paper towel like so. See how I'm turning it with my, with my hand. I'm turning it like this to keep the point. I don't even mind if there's a little bit of water on this. It actually works better. I'm going to take and put it into the black just to get a point. It's like a pen now. Now watch this. By taking a brush and literally making this stroke, I'm going to start pulling up some weeds. So I'm going to go to this side of the canvas and I'm just going to flick the brush up. See that? And depending on how high you want them, the higher you would flick. Flick meaning you're just taking the brush and going like that. Literally, that stroke. It's like you're going flip, 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 flip. And angling it and turning it, you get them to cross over to one another. And you create a series of tall and short grass blades. On this end here, I'm going to go a little higher, see? And you give the illusion that there's something growing, pushing back the ocean. We'll go under the bench in a second. I'm just going to stick to the outside. I don't want my hand to get in the way, but I'm flipping on this side the exact same way I flipped over here. If I could paint with my left hand, I could keep my hand from being in your view but that's why I did that side first because it's the exact same stroke over here except it's on the opposite side but the same stroke applies so you see how painting into the black flipping it up you get the grass blades now when you get to the bench area because there's a bench it may not get as much direct sunlight so it doesn't have to be tall but you want to put a few things just to help seat everybody see see how it looks like it's going all the way across and you see if you have those white lines inside you take your brush and you very slowly just work from an angle and just cover them the black of the canvas is going to help you to just create these corrections if you will and even though it looks slicker it's going to dry like that did just as matted and just as flat as everything else. I'm only going to do a couple of these because I'm not going to spend a lot of time wasting your time going through how to do the whole thing. I'm just going to show you how you do a few. And if you decide this is what you'd like to do to touch up your painting, please feel free, be my guest to do so. Now, if you notice, I'm staying in the inside of the black. So if my brush lays down, or well, I do that, it doesn't matter. But if I go out here where the color is and that happens, well, then there's not a lot I can do because the black is a very, very strong color. And just for the purposes of the video, I'm only showing you this because it's my job to show you how to do things. And again, even though it looks slick, it's going to dry flat. Remember that little spot I did earlier? You see how it's drying up? And it'll, it'll be just as matted as the rest of the painting. So you're not going to have two different color blacks. But what you will have is a lot neater look of your painting. But again, it's your call to make. You can leave it or you can spend some time and just take the little skinny brush, working very carefully and slowly, and just go over whatever you think you missed. So let's say that you stuck your hand in the color and the color got inside your characters like that did. You just take the brush with the black, paint over it, and there you have it. Okay, now I'm going to put in a couple of birds. 
And believe it or not, the painting will be finished. Now, before I put paint on the brush, let me show you. I'm going to put my pinky down, hold the brush like a pencil, and I'm literally going to make this motion like a little skinny line here. And I'm going to push down, lift up, and then I'm going to go that way. Now, watch. It's better if you see it because it's a lot easier than you think. Tape, put my pinky down to brace myself. That's to just hold my balance. Use it like a pencil. Take and make a nice little skinny line. Push down on the brush. Lift up. Bird number one. <laughs> How cool was that? I'm going to do another one. This one is right up here. He's going to make his wing. Push down for his body. Lift up. Bird number two. And the last bird is over here. So I'm going to put my pinky right into the black of the canvas. Make a line for the wing. Push down a little bit. Lift up. By pushing down, I get the body of the bird. The other parts is just me not pressing hard on the canvas, but just kind of grazing across it to give me that little line for the wing. Push down, wing. And there are my three birds. There are my grass blades. It's my lovely couple on the bench. I could continue to do little subtle white dot corrections if I want. But for the most part, our painting is completed. Well, I hope you had fun. Thank you for joining us. This is a very fun project. Very easy project. You could take these couple and make trees over here and put them in a park. You can do a sandy beach. You can throw a lighthouse in the back back here. You could take the black and create islands if you want over here. There's so many different elements that you can add to this. You can actually take and paint all of this white and paint actual people. Give him a hat, a face tone, a shirt, pants, her face tone, hair color, a dress, paint the bench brown, whatever. And you could turn this into a colored version of actual people. But with Peel Off and Jay Robinson Art, our job is to help open your creativity. I'm not here to tell you what to put in your painting. I'm here to suggest that if you want to paint, let's say, this project, then this is what you do. If you wanted to add different elements into your project, I say go for it. There's nothing like experimenting. It's one of the best ways to learn. And don't be afraid to make a mistake. Sometimes mistakes turn into fortunes. Ask Jackson Pollock. Anyway, you guys, I hope you had a great time. Thank you very much for joining us. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you want to see more videos like this, by subscribing, you'll get a notice automatically when a new video is posted. As well, if you like the painting, please give us a thumbs up. And if you just want to see what other painting projects or peel-off painting kits you can get, go to peeloff.com. That's P-E-I-L-O-F-F.com. Till next time, you guys take care of one another and enjoy. Bye-bye.